Support for City Series Boys Football is provided by the Akron Public Schools Career Education Department at 330-761-3131 or APScareers.com. Welcome here to InfoCision Stadium Summa Field as we're about ready to kick off to the Akron Public Schools City Series Championship as the East Dragons come in at a 7-2 record. They lost last time in the regular season to the Bookdale Griffins who pick up the ball at the 22-yard line and they return uh -oh. and he's still on his feet at the 50-yard line, continues to the 40, cuts back inside and a big hit by the Dragons finally take him down in Dragon territory, goes down at the 40-yard line. The uh, Bookdale Griffins come in six and three overall. Both teams uh, just on the outside of the playoff pitcher, but just by percentage points on both sides. Uh, they were just <clears throat> outside of there, so they qualify for the uh, City Series. Sorry, seven and three. Both teams, yeah. Seven and three, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, uh, both teams seven and three, but both of them just outside the playoff pitcher, so they're here in our this is it, classic yeah. game here at InfoCision Stadium, Summa Field. The, Akron City Series Championship, and certainly you couldn't have requested any better matchup than these two teams here as they look to take the field for the champion in the league. Wuchtel takes off after a great return, throws over the middle oh, off the hands open. of the intended target. Wide open. It'll be second and ten. Zaire Keen st straight up the streak there. Um, and as you mentioned, we talked a little bit about off-air beforehand. Dave, uh, no Brandon McGinnis tonight, at least to start, and Michael Lino getting the call at quarterback, the 5'11 junior. Yeah, and um, we had uh, he heard a little bit up here in the press box that um, McGinnis had uh, gotten eight stitches above his eye, um, and unfortunately that's about right where the pad is for the helmet of the football helmet and it was certainly uncomfortable and unsafe for him to, to put it on. So they go with the younger quarterback here and you can see some of the inexperience already as they'll take a timeout here in the early going. Still 0-0 your score here as we're just underway with things here as 11:49 uh, here in the first quarter. I want to let you know that City Series football right here on APS 15 supported by Career Education Department where students can choose from 30 different career education programs for more information, APScareers.com. Also, at the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll have our Fleury's Cafe player of the game. Fleury's Cafe, known for their signature pancakes, and that's why they give us our signature player of the game, Fleury's Cafe, in Cuyahoga Falls at 2202 Front Street, a delicious place for breakfast. Joe Bacansky, Dave Schick here. Uh, we're getting into it quickly here as we got things underway. Team's a little slow to get out uh, from the from the box and also have some interviews uh, questions from Coach Hayes from the East Dragons a little bit uh, insight on how they saw the first loss against Bookdale and how their team had been doing just missing the cusp of the playoffs second and ten now as Alino goes back to throw right side is going to be caught at the 35 yard line makes a move goes backwards a little bit and I think they're going to take a yard away from him on the catch Alino's pass is complete Nice, easy throw and catch out Trishon to Goldie number eight, Trishon Goldie Buchanan with his first reception. Tried to make something happen. He did have the big return there to start the game. Bring up about third and seven. Three yards on the completion. And Dave, two, two, really the story of two teams kind of going a little bit in opposite directions. Both those hot and east is cold having lost their drop dropped their last two ball games after starting off the season at seven and one. Again, he looks, he's gonna roll right this time, comes out of the pocket right around the first down range, still breaks the tackle, still on his feet at the 10, five, in for a touchdown, a great run of 36 yards as he takes off on the QB keeper and certainly likes his, uh, his first run coming out. Lino is able to get the touchdown and gets the first uh, points on the score. Michael Lino 
Their sub in uh, QB played last week, listed at 5'11", 180 pounds. And the key is there, they, they sent a blitz up the middle and it was somewhat, didn't come completely clean. It was somewhat picked up and then Lino saw it and all he did was have to make one move and he just outran the coverage on the other side. Big score for the Griffs. So they start off looking to add the extra point. It was a quick kick and it goes through the uprights for the extra point. As they're able to get that one on the board and they take the lead here, seven to nothing here in the first quarter. So a 44 yard drive and it seemed like they were kind of stalling there for a little bit, but a, a breaking coverage as he breaks the pocket, trying to get a first down, cuts up the sideline, and there's no one else there to make the tackle and goes in for the touchdown. A 36-yard 36, 30, 36 QB keeper for Lino to get the first score here. And as we mentioned, we felt by a flawless second half of the year for the Griffins after starting at the season a little slowly with that non tough non-conference schedule. They had even got a you know, big victory against Youngstown Cardinal Mooney out of conference and then the big win here just a couple of weeks ago in info decision against East with a come from behind victory and a big long field goal kick to win it. Uh, it's kind of propelled them momentum wise where East little hangover effect the next week as they lose on the road at Hor Warren Howland to kill their playoff hopes and then you see the weapon that is Devin West there hitting the ball in the end zone, and that will mean East will start off way back here at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, so not able to get a fantastic return like Bookdale was able to to jumpstart the offense here. They'll start on the 20-yard line here with their first possession. And when East had it, had it rolling earlier in the year, I mean, they, they rolled through and being a couple of perennial powers um, in and around in Dover and North Canton Hoover also took Jackson, who's a Division I, Region I team, to, to the limit, losing to them by less than a touchdown. Yeah, and all those teams, certainly in Division I, were looking at playoff spots as well. First run to the left side isn't going to really get him anywhere as he takes off and is met at the line of scrimmage. And we have a great vantage point up here where we're at it in this beautiful press box, but it looked if he would have cut that north-south up instead of taking it outside, um, it was Devonier Floyd. Yeah. He could have got five or six yards instead of trying to beat this book to pursuit instead of just getting a one-yard gain. Yeah, and, and we saw them uh, in their first uh, matchup against book to how, how fast the defensive line was for Bookdale, and it wasn't really till that fourth quarter uh, that the Dragons kind of matched that uh, that intensity and speed. Did a lot of things side to side and got in trouble with that defensive line as they come through again and stop him with the ball, and he'll get back. Yeah, the, the spot says get back to the line of scrimmage. The marker, or one back. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. So two rushes, zero yards for Floyd. Orrell Smith-Williams with that defensive tackle spot. He just played beat his man. Third and ten, not what he likes. They yeah. like to control the ball and, and run it as much as possible. It'll be a passing situation more than likely. During the uh, first first quarter break between the second quarter, we'll have our All City Series first team as well as our Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year and Coach of the Year. We'll have those honors here as the defense slides over a little bit. Looking left, has time over the middle and caught close to a first down. He's going to stretch and be close. Spot shows he's going to be about a half yard short of mm -hmm. making it. And Javon Jones on the catch, able to haul it in for eight for nine yards. Just got to take that route one more yard, partner. Get to the sticks. Uh, I think he was certainly trying to make sure that. Uh, had the ball, didn't, it's a, didn't get it stripped because it looked a little notorious for that. It looks like the punt team is going to come on. I mean, I get on I get on pro receivers for doing that because they got yard markers on both sides. You know, they have all these advantages here. Oh, they're going to take timeout. So they'll take a timeout, and while we do that, we'll look at our all-academic team. Oh. 
All academic team will start uh, with the Dragons here. They had many players that uh, were able to make the all academic team. We'll go uh, through them in order here. Devani and Blackwell with a 3.5. Deshaun Brimage with a 3.8. Austin Collins with a 3.4. Ryan Collins also with a 3.4. Devonier Floyd with a 3.4. Daryl Glover with a 3.4. Aaron Johnson with a 3.4. And Trey Kelly uh, with a 3.6. Karan Matthews with a 3.6. Richter McAllister with a 3.6. Uh, Jayshon Robinson with a 3.4. And Anthony Sams with a 3.8. And Robert White with a 3.4. We'll get to the rest of the players that we had listed there as the timeout has concluded. Certainly here fourth down and short. Looking to punt this one away. And now looking to come in. And it looks like they're going to run it here as Collins gets under center. It looks like they're going to try and push this one across. A big stand here early. A big push and to me from our he vantage point it. looks like he got Second it. Second effort. So on a fourth down and one they're able to get their first first down here in the ball game and move the chains. Keep the drive alive here with 839 in the first quarter. Gutsy call and they didn't get much. Good push by that Bookto front seven. But they got just enough. They needed a half a yard, and I think that's about what they got. They didn't get much more than that. But a little second effort by Collins to get the first down. And a little push by his fullback, I think, helped too. Sometimes you got to get Kendrick. the quarterback where you want him to be with a little extra push in the lower back to get him across the line. First down and 10 now. Collins looking to hand off to Floyd or off the left side, gets through the seam. Uh, can't get away from the tackler, but he'll gain six yards on the carry, his first positive net gain here on his third carry. David Richardson on the on the tackle, but I'll tell you what, he did a nice job of following his fullback there, not, not getting too far too loose, stayed tight. Nice gain on first down for the Dragons. It looked like he was going to bounce, and then he decided to follow that fullback. Good decision. Davian Blackwell leading the way there. I think our, shouldn't our ball be on the other hash mark? A little further out? Isn't that the high school line or am I, or am I opposite? No, I think that's the, I think they got the right one. Okay. It's wider. Okay. Oh, good spin move. Good spin into the open side of the field. Has a man there and will get the first down. That was Deshaun Brimage on the run. Deshaun Eight yards for Brimage on his first carry. Went out of bounds. 45 yard line will be first and 10. Dragon. Brimage, the uh, senior at 6'1, 210 pounds. Certainly one of their uh, more bruising backs that come in. As now they set up first and 10 now from the 45 yard line. Here at midfield they'll have uh, De'Eric Achille moving in motion to the bottom of your screen. And they hand the ball off again, breaks some tackles, goes down, but falls forward, gets two yards on the carry. Brimage for most of the season played played as a two-way standout, but a lot of it from a wide receiver position, getting, getting some tailback carries today. And yeah, listed in our book uh, up here as a wide receiver, um, but certainly throughout his time at East has, has played probably more running back than he has wide receiver until this, this year. And I think him playing that position this year has been uh, mainly because Floyd has done so well out of the backfield. They've, they've put the weapon on the outside. And he split back out at the top of your screen on this one. Collins looks left, goes over the center, pressure coming all over, gets rid of the ball, and a wise incomplete to stop what would have been a sack, and he was taken down. Gets pop, pops right back up, though, mm -hmm. and that pocket just kind of collapsed around him. Yeah, he had time early. I think if he could have got the ball out to Floyd early, that's that's not the that's the last read. But Floyd what was open early in the flat, the the check down, if you will. 
East will be facing third down and eight. So at 6.28 here in the first quarter, looking to get an additional uh, first down here on third down and long, third and eight here. Top of your screen is going to be uh, Javon Jones. He hasn't settled in yet, finally does. Looks like a run play. They do hand the ball off, and oh, it gets nothing. nowhere. He's going to lose four on the carry. And that was number 10, Claude Williams. His first carry goes the wrong direction. Now, it, it seems odd in a long third down situation to bring in a new back to carry the ball when it's a pretty crucial time. You kind of want someone that has kind of been in the flow a little bit of this game so far, the first carry going against this quick defense again. Yeah, but Claude, Claude's kind of been that, that, that secondary back a lot for them this year. The problem is running those wide plays with the penetration of book defense. You need the trap and the quick hitters. The, the wide plays, they're just too fast. And we saw in their first game a lot of uh, miscues with the special teams as Bookdale catches and drops the punt, but yeah. they came after the punt again. That was a big deciding factor in their first game here in the regular season. Able to get this one off and gets a good uh, net gain of 35 yards on the punt. Yeah, fortunate, fortunate on that one. So Bookdale now takes over their second uh, offensive set. Yeah, you're correct. I, I think they're, they're using the uh, college hashes instead of the high school hashes, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, why not? <laughs> I mean, I think the goal of any of those guys is to be playing college football if they could. This one, a, a broken play, turns into a positive net gain on the, again, the scramble. I think that was just a good read there by uh, okay. Lino. <laughs> so he's got a 36-yard touchdown on his first carry. Second one goes for 14 or first down. And you know what? A, a broken play what makes a broken play look a lot better. Speed. <laughs> If it was, I'm, I'm not in the playbook, I don't know. But. He's still going to line up in the shotgun. On the delay, hands off, is uh -oh. running backwards. Breaks another tackle, but the second one comes in and gets him down, and there's no place to go for the running back as uh, Winston has nothing to do and gets a negative gar uh, play call on this one, loses seven yards. Yeah, Jaquez Winston didn't have a chance to get going there. He broke a tackle, but it really didn't... It, didn't really help his progress because of the pursuit of the Dragon defense. Their biggest play of the game so far. So they set up uh, second and 17, and you could see that play just developing the wrong way as he tried to go backwards to get away from the defenders and create space and good pursuit by the Dragons. Pocket is there for him, ball a bit underthrown and incomplete. Whitson did a great job of picking up the blitz to give his quarterback a little bit longer, Lino, you know, to, to pass, but it was good coverage out there on the far side. Trying to see who that was intended for. I'll get that for you here shortly. Can you see binoculars? Yeah. Binoculars. That was my little... Hey, Joe. And it's tough to see him with that. Well, you, I couldn't tell. Did you tell me who that was? I believe it was... Uh, Goalie Ke Buchanan? Keen, I want to say. Okay. Keen's back up there. He's going to throw again. This one, a great catch across the middle of the field. Breaks the tackle. And goes down at the 32-yard line. That's number 11 on the reception. Christopher Robinson. 33-yard pass and catch. And Robinson on the other side of the receiving end. Well, well thrown and well caught. So that flips the sides of the field as they go into East Territory. And the deadliest part of, of Bookdale are these big plays. Uh, last drive, a 36-yard run, and this one now a 33-yard. <coughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> In stereo. <laughs> the ability to 
You try not to cough into the microphone. I did try I not to. Oh, okay. Just, I tried not to cough at all, but that was a mistake. Turn it down like this. And, and then. It, <laughs> was, it, it wasn't a planned oh. cough. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, short gain there on the run. Sure yeah, ball Whitson, was, was yeah, Whitson on a yard. Yeah. Second and nine. Whitson. Switson. Whitson. Whitson. Whitson stays in the backfield, along with fullback number 21, yeah, D'Angelo Johnson. A pitch. It looked like it was a little low coming to him. Makes the grab, gets some positive yards, won't get the first down. But it'll gain about six on the carry. Uh, and Brimmage showed what he's going to college to, to do right there as he came up on run support and just blew up the running back. And still a nice job by Whitson being patient and getting positive yards because I thought they were going to get him for a loss. Third down and three now. Just under three minutes here in the first quarter. Seven nothing your score with the Griffins leading the Dragons here in the Akron City Series football game. Good spot here for a, a hard count. They're going unbalanced to that right side. Dragons come in, quick call. Pressure in the backfield, but hands on the end around. Has to make a move. Will have the first down and goes out of bounds on the run. And the, de the defensive end got nosy. He had... He had the guy running right to him, but he had his eyes in the middle there, and the guy kind of ran right around him. Gain a seven on the run by Robinson for another first down. So the drive stays alive. Two for two, third down conversions. Really three for three of the game. The other one was a touchdown, so they've been great on third down. Hands the ball off left side. And you gotta like right now, Dave, what they're doing to East. They're, they're giving them a little bit of their own mess and getting double tights and running the ball right at them. It looked like we had a new uh, ball carrier on that one, or was that Whitson? No, it was Whitson. Okay. He's coming out though. So he gained four on that one. Running very well inside blocking scheme there. Use a lot of the play call on this one. Second down and six. Here with a minute 38. Hand the ball off. Pressure in the backfield, but just can't get him down. Ball Bumble. comes out, uh -oh. though, and they've got it picked up from the 18, and he is returning it all the way by himself. A fantastic job of going 81 yards on the return for a touchdown. Get six points up on the board. The break that the Dragons desperately needed, Dave. So with 121 here in the first quarter, they fumble the ball on the 18-yard line and goes all the way the other direction. Kyrie Williams, wow. So Williams gets points for him. And really... The way he picked it up, there was just a lot of green space ahead of him. So it was just a foot race and about the 50-yard line. Buchtel didn't have the angle to try to uh, stop him from the six points. Just came out at an odd time. So unofficially, I got an 80 or 78-yard fumble return there. I had 82 there on the 18 18? Okay, 82. Good addition. Extra points up. And it is right through. And just like that, the Dragons, who had been being dominated, get the turnover and turn it into six. A big fumble by the Griffs, leading the points, instantaneous points. Well, and really should energize the, uh, the Dragons' sideline because offensively both times they haven't been able to do too much. So a lot of early scoring here from Infocision Stadium Summa Field as both teams get touchdowns from the opposite side of the ball, offensively and defensively. 
be interesting to see how the Dragons come out here and play defense. As, as we saw, it, it seems like a very emotional team as, uh, as, as at times they were able to, to match that intensity of the Griffins in their regular season bout. And I think we talked about even during that broadcast that, you know, if if East had had beaten Bookdol, they would probably not be playing in tonight's game. Yeah, they would have the extra points needed to get into the playoffs. And how that affected their games thereafter that. Looking to kick this one away, all tied up down the right side of the field. And it is going to almost stop at the goal oh, line. Oh, it does. Unbelievable. It stops right at the one-yard line, so he picks it up. Uh -oh. He's going to get 10 yards, and he's got some good blocking, but he's very speedy. Flags all over the place. <laughs> and they're going to take him down about the 20-yard line, but a lot of flags down around the 15-yard line. As a fantastic kick just yes. seems to stop at the one-yard line. And I believe uh, Kendrick Buckley is their kicker. That was perfect just completely stopped moving and even the Bukto player kind of sat there and waited for it to go over the line to get a touchback to come back out to the 20 but it just stopped there and he picked it up had a good return I think we're going to have some blocks in the back or holding around the 15 yard line so that will be about half the distance penalty they'll start at about the 7 and he waited as long as he can. He just needed one more rotation of that ball for it to get the end zone. Wasn't happening, though. I'll tell you, this is a nice turn of events for the Dragons. We'll see if they can use this momentum here. Well, and they, we, we thought they would come out pumped up from the defensive touchdown. Now the defense gets them deep in their own territory against a young quarterback. Lino moves him over, hands the ball off. And they'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Trying to strip that ball every chance they get. No game for Whitson. Well, I've seen several high school games this year. And, and I think we see, and even the upper levels, we see too much of guys trying to strip the football. That's why we see so many missed tackles. That and guys don't tackle well. They so go for the big hit high. If you dive at a guy's ankles, I don't care if he's 150 pounds or 250 pounds. If you take out his feet, guess what? Yeah, but he's going to go down. If he's 250 pounds, he might fall on top of you. <laughs> feels better than him running over you. Hey, exactly. Well, maybe about the same. It feels, better, <laughs> it feels better than him running by you for a touchdown, yeah. too. Four wide for the Griffins, and they don't have anywhere to go. Whistle, whistle. Yeah. And the whistle was there, but did not stop a, a bit of a, a push coming through as a defensive lineman. Uh, Tyron Tucker, I'm sorry, not Tyron Tucker. Uh, uh, he doesn't have a name. Number 55 of the East Track. Uh, uh, Darius Reese. What? Oh. Oh, from your old one. Yeah, I'm Look going to man. Well, that doesn't mean it's right. Well, we'll put him on there. Cause Second he's penalty. not listed here, but he's, list he's down there. Let's go Reese there. The uh. Dragons are going back, 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 back. Class completed, and as you said about tackling low, <laughs> he had both of his feet wrapped up as he tried to get out, knowing that if he could break that tackle, it would be him down the sidelines. Zaire Keen on the reception. So Keen's going to get uh, about 10 yards on that one. His first catch, third target already. That'll be the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter. So here at uh, InfoCision Stadium, Summa Field, 7-7 seven, seven your score with the Griffins and Dragons all tied up. Both of them scoring from both sides. We'll finish up our all-academic team, and then we'll go in to the, uh, the first team uh, Joe will have for us. Uh, finishing up all-academic, we go on to Ellett as Andrew uh, Bordenkircher with a 3.4. David Haverstick with a 3.6. Tyler Hughes with a 3.5. Cordell Majors with a 3.7. Griffin Malik with a 3.5. Josh Mearing with a 3.9. Khalid Menard with a 4.1. Stephen Shears with a 4.1. And then we go on to the Kenmore uh, Garfield with Lamont Evans with a 3.6. And Devin Fox with a 3.4. I certainly want to congratulate all of those making the all-city all academic football team for 2017. Nice job. I think next time out we'll, we'll hit the all-city uh, 
first team. From yeah, I think so. We we'll, we'll have the first team, second team, and honorable mention. I got so it already. A good place, a good amount of reading, but we certainly <laughs> want to uh, congratulate all those that make those teams for their. I uh, got to celebrate more. Overall, third down and short, and he's looking to run. Really didn't take much time, and he's going to be caught at the line of scrimmage. No gain, finally, for Lino on the run. So it sets up a fourth and short situation. Didn't give time for that to work, and it was read really nicely by number 51, Aaron Johnson. Looks like, and probably not close enough to go for it here. As Lino was stuffed on that one. And it looks like they're going to punt this one away as... Uh, Demetrius Dixon comes in to kick. So the penalties in field position really hurt the Griffins on that possession. Look how deep their punter is. I mean, sometimes we see punters 10 yards. He is about 16 yards behind the line. And it's snapped Snap perfect. There. Kick is away. That de additional difference <coughs> distance doesn't make the ball go any, fast, any farther. Down the field, it's going to be down at the 46-yard <laughs> line. Did you happen to see Brimage? No. He didn't move a step. He saw it was short. He's like, yep, I ain't getting that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stay back uh, here and let hit the turf. That ball is knuckling. I'm, I'm good. And actually, it proved to be a good decision because they got a bounce of about three or four yards in their direction. So great field position for the Dragons. See if they can take advantage here. On into the second quarter we go. Hopefully they feel that they can get a little more momentum offensively. Now finally starting on the short part of the field, able to move the ball pretty well on their first go round, but not, not able to get any points up on the board. Hands the ball off right side and will lose a yard on the carry and that's gonna be Williams. Yeah, he's just running into guys in the backfield. They're not getting to that second level. Too much penetration by the defense. Counter plays just not working. Two carries, both of them for negative yards. They know what they're doing, trying to go away from Floyd just to, so they have to key on something else, but it's got to be more direct stuff. I'd like to see him even run the fullback. Top of your screen, Jerome Hall. Motion coming up is Jones. And looking to hand the ball off. There's a good run. And a fantastic run to the right side. And he'll go down for a gain of 14 and a flag also down. That I think is going to be on Buchtel for a horse collar tackle. Seriously? I believe In so. In the middle of his back? Uh, That's a horse collar now? I think so. That's what it looked I, like. I thought you That's had to take him down by the neck, oh, right? not see? the middle of his back. Pick it up. Yeah, good. See? That is the most overcalled play. What I would like to say, though, is that the, the team came together, said, hey, we don't have what you had, and they good. pick up a flag. How, how often do you see that? I don't know, but they got it right, which is, I guess is what matters. That's what matters. <laughs> good run there by Floyd. Think you, you think you have a good angle? You don't have an angle. That's right. 10.02 here in the second quarter, all nighted up at 7. Dave Schick, Joe Pekanski broadcasting this fantastic game so far here from InfoCision Stadium as they run up the gut for nine yards. The running quarterback, Kyrie Williams, who's maybe finally got his breath back after that long touchdown with their fumble recovery. Right? How many get there? We got eight. A lot. That's the fifth guy they've run already. Okay. I have Floyd, Brimage, Williams, and Williams. Am I missing somebody? Yeah, Collins. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The, the half-yard sneaker. <laughs> Second and a long one here for the Dragons. <laughs> Collins looking to hand the ball off to Floyd, trying to get around the outside again and taken out by the knees, as Joe mentioned, but still gets the first down, a three-yard carry for him. More importantly, keeps the drive and the chains moving. Yeah, good tackle by Robinson as he came up and supported that, that run, but Floyd just falls forward, as many good backs do. First down. First down. Uh, 
scrimmage down, I believe, at the bottom of your screen this time. Lots of space down there, but it won't matter as he's going to run forward. And you had talked about, you know, using kind of the the fullback, and it seems like they, they're going on these quicker snaps, but sometimes with the quarterback yeah, trying hard. to get a couple extra yards. Yeah, give yourself an extra blocker. Collins not known as a, as a great runner, but it's get the ball in other people's hands, keep, keep the defense honest so they can't send, you know, three or four guys out Floyd every time. I'd like to see him use even that short, you know, little wide receiver screen or short pass game, too. Second down now and six. They've been good with it in the past. Three wide for the Dragons. And they'll look Same to play. run again. And a high tackle again, as we mentioned, but it looks like he's going to gain a yard. William, quarterback keeper. First hit by Tyrese Littlefade. Interesting on the same play the other side. Not same success. Definitely four down territory right here for the Dragons. I guess uh, when, when you're looking at them giving the snap to to Collins and running, why not direct snap to one of the running backs that's back there with an extra ball? Well, they did that with uh, they did that with Kyrie Williams and got the eight yards. Mm -hmm. so they've gone with that play three times. There must be something they're seeing. And, and Williams is in again. He's going to run it. Good patience as he follows Floyd, but too much pursuit by the book to defense. He's going to gain two yards, but not going to be enough for the first down, fourth down and short. Williams, quarterback keeper. Richard Good on the tackle. Now what do you do? you play action or do you run, give it to Floyd? Well, I think you could do a couple of things. You could come out and uh, try to get him to come off sides. So that would give you a first down. Maybe a good hard count, and if needed, you could take a timeout, which it looks like that's how they're going to go, uh, and then kind of decide what you'd like to do. Want me to go for it? Sure. Well, this timeout gives us a chance to let you know the All-City Football Coaches First Team. Um, first from North High School, defensive back Leary Evans and running back Javon Banks. From Kenmore Garfield, defensive tackle John Varney, offensive lineman Braden Palmer, punter Bengali Kamara, and wide receiver Mark Hale. From Firestone, wide receiver Darshawn Williams. It's listed as athlete, and we saw some of the plays he makes. Justin Moore from Firestone, also Josh Mitchell, running back, and Jalen Johnson, defensive lineman from the Falcons. From the Orangemen, defensive backs Jonah Carter and Caleb Schramm, and linebacker Andrew Borden Kircher. And then from our team tier, first from the East Dragons, defensive end Tanner Kelly, wide receiver Jerome Hall, running back Devonier Floyd, offensive lineman Kendrick Buckley, and defensive back Deshaun Brimage. Those three gentlemen I just mentioned, Floyd, Buckley, and Brimage, all signees here at the University of Akron. And from Bookdale, Bookdale, they got the special teams players of the year with kicker Jaquise Winston and, or, and then place kicker Devin West, so punter and kicker. Defensive back Chris Robinson, defensive tackle David Richardson, linebacker Tyrese Littlepage, defensive end Dajuan Harvey, cornerback Trishon Goley, and linebacker De'Aire Blash. Certainly congratulate to all of them on their first team selection here for the 2017 All-City Series uh, football team. And we are going to come out for fourth down, and we're going to continue another with another timeout. Time well, that's good because I wasn't quite done yet. And congratulations, first of all, Defensive Player of the Year, De'Aire Blash from Bookdale. Our Offensive Player of the Year, not surprisingly, Devin Deere Floyd from East. And Coach of the Year, Ricky Powers from the Bookdale Griffins. Congratulations to all of those gentlemen. So that goes through our first team. want to thank all of those uh, athletes and, and certainly congratulations to Coach Powers on their selection to the first team. Take our, I guess we'll take the next time out to do second team and some honorable mentions. East down to no timeouts. Did they take back to back timeouts? They did, yeah. And that's why we talked about coming out He's a big on that first one to try to get them offside so you could at least get out on the field. And it looks like they did that the second time. Obviously, they didn't move forward or, or they saw something prior to the snap. And now they come out for a second time on fourth down and short. 
Yeah, as we mentioned, both of these teams out of the playoff hunt. So this is their playoff game. This is the do or die game. Big play here for the Dragons. Yeah, and talking with Coach Hayes, it seemed like this is a more of a redemption game for his team as they were very unhappy about it. So again, a hard, another hard count here coming out of the second timeout. I formation, fourth down, looking to throw, has time, pressure coming from behind, and he's going to be sacked. And a turnover on downs is a coverage sack. You got to throw it. Even if the guy's not open, you got to throw it off, let your, let your wide receiver have a chance to make a play. He had a chance to get rid of it. He just hesitated. Which he who hesitates is lost. Throw it up, man. Oh, man. wise job. Let your athlete make a play if they don't. Especially on fourth down, because if they don't, you tackle them in the end zone, they get the ball to the 20-yard line, which is where they have the ball anyway. Yeah. So a big play and a big stop for the Griffins defensively. Certainly disappointing coming out of two timeouts that they're not able to get anything going. As they hand the ball off and, and don't have a lot of places to go for them. New quarterback in the game, partner. Okay. Brandon McGinnis. McGinnis is Brandon in. McGinnis, he gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. He was the one rushing the ball? Yes, sir. So he is getting his first action here in the second quarter. Looks over the field. Takes a snap, has time, rolls to his right. Pressure closing in on him, flags are down. And they get the sack. That it would be about a seven-yard sack. But that's a coverage sack. Trey Kelly, and you never saw him. I think it's going to be a hold to go with it, too. He did. Yep. Didn't hold him good enough, though, because he still got the sack. They're going to decline that. Third down. Loss of about seven, and that was McGinnis had time. He just could not find anybody open and didn't see Kelly coming from that backside. Mm -hmm. And lucky he wasn't about to throw because that could have been dislodged. I'll put that in my thesaurus. Thank you. Put that where, where's my interviews? I haven't heard any yet. Are you saving it? We had to get there. I, I would love to do one. We're going to pay the bills. Well, uh, what am I supposed to do? He had a double timeout. I know. I, 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 I hogged out. He was really long on the interview, so maybe, oh, we'll so maybe, maybe you need to wait for another. I think I'll, I'll next time I'll get you one. It was one of those ones where I asked him a, kind of a two-part question. And They're just pinning him back and coming. Another sack, back-to-back -back sacks with McGinnis in there. And that time it's number 55, Darius Reese. The, the pressure forced McGinnis from the outside, though, forced him up into the pocket, and then Reese cleaned it up. Both these defenses kind of settling in here right now. So fourth down and long, a good 20 yards. And they'll have to kick this one away, and, and the momentum has shifted drastically defensively. And now they're going to come in. They spread out wide. Now they're coming in tight. They're coming after it, I think. Send a nine. They're not I really coming I after, it. Came after it. And they want to try and catch this one, and they do, but they drop it. Oh no! And I think Bookdale might have it. From where it looked like, I'm not nope. sure what the scrum is. Now they're going to give the signal that he was able to get on top of it. So they wanted to try to return this ball, picking up at the 40-yard line. Certainly, even a, a five to 10-yard return would have set them up even better, but it's nice to bring the football along with you. Both teams fumbled a punt now, but luckily both of them got back on it. I think Deshaun Brimage on the catch, not able to haul that one in. With 4.31 left here in the second quarter, good field position again for the Dragons. Let's see if they can take advantage this time. So penalties hurting that last drive by the Griffins. Penalties and sacks, however you want to look at it. Now they come back to the other side as East now has the ball again in Vuchtel territory. 
Went for it on fourth down, couldn't convert. Have another shot at it now. Hand the ball off, trying to go through the trees, can't get anything going, and Floyd will go backwards for minus two yards. Yeah, these defenses are just pinning it back. It just, they're in all-out blitz mode every play, it seems like. So how about like a little pop pad, a little quick slant? Got my offensive coordinator hat on. I like the quarterback whisper over here. Hey, he's going to be open. Little pop pass. Pop pass, pop pass, pop pass, pop pass. From a Sublim I'm subliminal messaging. Joe McCansky, a little pop pass. Keep the defense honest on there. Just not jumping your snap count and trying to take the handoff. I don't know. Oh, I think I do know. Boy, this is going to be a delay game. Slow coming in, Cameron Matthews. I'm calling it. They got the hand up already. Ah, uh, yes. That was close, but I got it. <laughs> Five-yard penalty on not being able to get the play off in time. And they got it off pretty quick, but it took them so long to get set up. They still had personnel issues coming in. I think we can officially retire my digital recorder. Yeah, it's, it's see, see if that drops that off the balcony and see if it's how many pieces it shatters into. I think it might fly. It's so old. It'll just fly off into the sunset. <laughs> Collins looking right side. Has a man there behind it. Threw it long oh. and still about five yards just out of reach. No flag. That was down. Uh, Rimmage okay. tried to make a, an adjustment on the football. Just kind of floated out of his reach. Collins, only his second passing attempt? Third? Mm -hmm. oh. One for three for nine yards. So third down and 18 off the last bad play. Dragons will be facing third and 18. Collins comes in. Again, late bringing personnel in as Jerome Hall's got to go all the way across the field prior to the snap count. Gets in in time. Collins looking Watch pressure out. coming. A little pass to the line of scrimmage. Comes back inside. Some good blocking. And it looks like they'll get about seven on it, but not enough for a first down, certainly. Pass uh, for Floyd. Brought down by Two for four passing now. Yes, good call. So great defensive plays so far, but the offenses haven't been able to outmaster them yet. River Collins in the punt. Both these teams just running through as we're Gliding through this quarter with 2.36 here in the second quarter. Still 7-7 seven, seven your score here on APS 15. Both teams notched at 7. Gets the snap. This came through, but a good kick. is going to hit at the 4. And that one doesn't have the same magic. It'll roll into the end zone, and they'll come out to the 20. Nice job by the East Punt team. That, w that was a big problem. One of the main reasons they... they they lost that game, lost a lot of field position to their struggling punt game. But uh, nice job by Collins to get it off, but didn't get the good bounce. I feel like Peter's house just didn't – was it a slow night? And the the weather was absolutely awful. He said hardly anybody. Oh. Uh, so Mother Nature yeah. always wins, and I guess so do we mine, in mine that sense. Mine wasn't bad, though. We had a lot of cloud Ours cover. Packed, yeah. Ours was – there was no rain, but it was freezing. Ours was, uh, it wasn't bad till about 7.30, and then it just got, like, the temperature just fell out. Like, we had good cloud cover before that. Yeah, and then we had, like, the, it wasn't real windy, but the wind was so cold, it really got to us. We didn't really have much wind. Nice pitch and catch out here. For eight yards as he goes out of bounds, finally. Which will stop the clock. Zion Robinson. Zion Robinson. Oh, 
Four for a six. Uh, I'm sorry, who was that thrown by? That was back to Lino. Okay, that's what I thought. Get this candy away from me. <laughs> so I'm going to be sleeping by. There is, a, there, is, there is already a parent tax on my kid's candy. There's about, <laughs> about three uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cup tax. That sounds like that's what I like. I'm like, ah. Eh. I win. Uh, you know, I'm first generation, so the tax comes to me. And uh, the tax is going out to you trick-or-treating allows me to take these three Reese Cups. Lino, good patience that time on the run, and he scrambles for the first down. Fourth one for the Griffins of the first half. Lino's got 55 yards rushing on four carries with that 36-yard touchdown to start the game. That's going to help the average. Sure. Four wide for Lino. <laughs> You're not kidding. Looking right, has time, steps up into the pocket, shakes one off, still on his feet, unbelievably so. Shakes the third one off, but rolls onto the ground and is touched face there. Mask. Definite face mask. Well, and it was hard because he was ducking and weaving around everybody. 15-yard or two, I believe. So Lino's proving tough to take down, too. Very, very elusive. And now, guess what? What? Now they're in striking zone with 138 left and still two timeouts. 44-yard line. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, if they scored from 36 yards out. Scoring from uh, 56 is not unthinkable. Offense has been sputtered. That's probably their biggest gain since the first drive, or the second drive. Stays Throws right that. side, complete. And he'll have seven on that one. And how smart, get out of bounds. Could have tried to get the first down and, and made the move inside, but wisely tie ropes the sideline. And those... 15 extra seconds are way more important than those three yards. At this juncture. Robinson's second target, second reception. Mm -hmm. Four wide again. 58 yards passing for Lino, 55 yards rushing. I'd say that's good balance. That's what, probably like four, 14 fantasy points. Hey, isn't it a I don't think he Get got back it. to the line of scrimmage, pretty much. I'm not going to give him anything on that. Third yeah, down and short now. Zero. No timeout here. Or they did take it. They are going to take a time. They took it pretty quick. Didn't waste a lot of time, too. They'll still have one remaining, but they got a big third and one coming up here. I'll go to our uh, interview with East Coach, Coach Hayes. Coach, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how the last matchup with Booktool and kind of what you learned from that as you bring it into the championship game tonight? I think what we learned from that was exactly what we was going to get from, from two teams coming in that was that was battle-tested. It was a hard-fought game. It was a hard-fought game all game long. I thought both sides played, uh, played super hard. Um, you know, I think on, my, on our side, though, we got to have better execution uh, with some of the things that we're doing. Um, but, I mean, if it's any... If it's anything about what happened in that last game, I think this is going to be, be a very good one. Tell me a little bit about uh, your team this year and, and kind of what their uh, attitude's been like and maybe if there's one player that you could kind of highlight uh, that's really had a lot of growth this year. Um, I think the season, you know what, um, we were disappointed when we wasn't able to get a state playoff berth, but, you know, when I take a step back and look at things, we noticed that, you know, this is our sixth year. come back to that a little bit just after as the timeout ended. Like, like I said, it's a long, this question is probably the longest one, but it shows a lot of uh, kind of the, the culture of, of the team. What do we have there, Joe? And speaking of long, you have a, a quarterback keeper with a huge hole up the middle, 24 yards, and the first down. So the well-used timeout and well-designed play. Lino doing it again. Now he's going to look to do it with his arm. 
24 at the 24 yard line. It's going to be caught and down there. It'll gain eight. And that is Robinson again. Mm -hmm. Five straight completions for Lino. As they're looking to put points on before going into halftime. That one behind his receiver a little bit, but it looks like we do have a catch, and we do. And it get down to the one yard line. Great adjustment. 15 yard pass. Uh, who was that? That was, uh, no, it was uh, Goldie Buchanan. Great adjustment. Oh, never mind. It's, it's coming back. Dude. <laughs> oh. They had so much rhythm going, too. That's a big penalty. Still have what one timeout yet, yeah, holding. Well, so that doesn't count at all. Yep, take the pass off the board, take the completion off the board. Ooh. Big, big difference between being on the one yard line and the 25 <laughs> yard line with yeah, 22 maybe. seconds left. <laughs> Ouch. They got to get some pass rush here. Looking and they do. Right time. Gets hit while it goes and incomplete. I'll tell you, that was a great throw, and he was absolutely level. It is very difficult for me to see who it is. My Darius Reese, he absolutely levels. I can't tell who he threw it to. Uh, I got Darius Reese listed twice. That couldn't have been Darius Reese. That was... 23. You got 223 on your roster. Jonathan uh, for Buchtel? No, for East. Sorry. 23. Darius Reese. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, who is the pass intended for? That's what I mean. For Buchanan, I believe. Yes. No, it was intended for Zaire Keen. Okay. Third down, and here comes Reese again. He steps, steps up. Uh-oh, uh -oh, he's got him. And he's able to get his feet down. And that'll be a touchdown for the Griffins that go up on the board, and they will go into halftime leading this one. A fantastic job by the quarterback to step up. And a 25-yard strike for a touchdown. Zion Robinson on the reception. Boy, and how big is that? Stepped up because the pressure was coming, but he feels it, and he steps up. Big strike and a big score at the nine-second mark of the second quarter. So Lino to, uh, to Robinson for 25 yards. And good. And kick is good. Kick is going to be good. So they'll go up 14 to 7 here. With 12 seconds in the second quarter. And you thought the penalty was going to take it away. Now you only got nine seconds. And you've let them into the end. Someone let them take the lead after two very good drives into their territory if you're the East Dragons. And you had good pressure to, to take one good, pa one good pass away, but the second one, he outsmarts you, takes the big step forward, and just unloads the cannon. And it's caught in the back of the end zone. And a nice job by Robinson to keep his feet in as there was kind of a crossing pattern in the back of the end zone. Yeah, it looked like a crowd, but you, just, you could see when the pass finally went up that Robinson just got a little bit of separation as the defensive back from East tried to make a play on the ball, but it kind of led to just a little bit of separation. He pulls it down in traffic. Big play for the Griffins. And they kick it deep, surprisingly. That'll be returned at the three-yard line. And oh, a reverse, reverse. Do the reverse, but no place to go. Runs into his own player and goes down at the 15-yard line. I thought... He was kind of expected more, like, uh, where's the blockers in front of <laughs> He said Kyrie Williams. They had no place to go. And that'll do it here for the first half as the Bookdale Griffins, off a great play at the end of the quarter, go into halftime, leading this one 14-7 here in the City Series championship game at InfoCision Stadium, Summa Field. Joe and I will be back uh, a couple minutes before the second half starts with their first half stats. We'll see you then.
Welcome back as we're about ready to start the second half here. Joe has our first half stats of this ball game. 14 to seven year score with Bukto leading the East Dragons. For the visiting Dragons, only three first downs in the first half. 16 running, rushing attempts for 34 yards. They were led by Devin near Floyd, but he was held to only 20 yards rushing on six carries. Uh, passing Ryan Collins, two for four through the air for 17 yards, only 51 total yards for the Dragons, but the big one was the 82 yard fumble recovery to get them on the board. That was uh, Kyrie Williams who took it to the house for their only score. For the Dragons, they've got 171, or I'm sorry, for the Griffins, they have 171 total yards, 15 rushes for 80 yards, and the story really has been through the air and on the ground. Their quarterback, number five, Michael Lino, who has ran it for 55 of their 80 yards, and he's thrown it six of eight for 91 yards as we go here and start the second half. It is 14 to seven, Griffins. In a big possession here for the Dragons as they look to try to tie this thing up. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because in the first half, they, they seem to run the ball kind of ineffectively for a while trying mm -hmm. to go outside of the tackles. Then they changed it more in the second quarter where it was uh, a QB sneak, QB keepers, a lot quicker things up the middle for, for positive yards. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, which Coach Hayes was able to kind of discuss here a little further here at halftime. We'll have the rest of his interview during the next time out here in the third quarter. Looks to hand the ball off and goes into the Nothing. great wall of Buchtel <laughs> as he can't get anywhere, loses two yards on the carry. As Floyd loses two. So the offensive player of the year here in the City Series. Yeah, he ran into the defensive player of the year, De'Aire Blash, <laughs> and, and this host of others. But the key has been nothing you know, really for this East offense. And their biggest gain was 14 yards by Devin near Floyd, and nine is their next biggest gain, and a lot of negatives mixed in there as well. Well, and certainly the a much more balanced attack by the Griffins being able to pass the ball so effectively compared to just two to four passing for Collins here in the first half. Looking to pass now and up that percentage. This is a man wide open on the, on the seam. He gets up to the 46-yard line, goes down at the 45. A great strike there for 25 yards. Who's our catcher? Hit Jerome Hall, his first reception on a nice little slant route. We said, let's hit, some, hit a quick slant, and they listened. Wide open he was on there, and a great job by Hall and Collins to find him now. Biggest first play of the night. Looking to hand the ball, going right up uh -oh. the center, and Floyd He's goes gone. right through the line, and he will take it to the house. 45 yards on that play alone, and they get another touchdown up on the board, making it 13 to 14, but the speed going through the line, outstanding. In both times on the big plays in this game, both teams caught on a, on a blitzing situation, a run or a pass blitz, and it was just one cut for Floyd, and you saw he had angle, and if he has angle, he takes it to the house. And no big plays, 70 yards on two consecutive plays for the Dragons as they're right back in this one. Uh, we talked about Floyd, uh, you know, just about 20 yards there um, at halftime, but certainly a fantastic run for him for 45 yards, looking to notch this one back up at 14. 10.43 here in the third quarter, so a quick strike here for the Dragons. And it looks like they are going to Oh, no, but it's on my time here. Let's have an equipment issue. Okay, he's running. Uh, okay. Hey, where's the tee at? Hey, uh. No, they got a tee. Hey, guys, uh. You got, can, can I get a shoelace or something? <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing. He, he didn't seem to run off the field very well. It looks like it's. Oh, blood. I bet it's blood. Okay, so wiped, wiped it off. And I think they're going to want to take a look at it one more or time. Ma or maybe his gloves ripped. and they That's nice that they allowed him to do that. Maybe, is he the snapper? He's the kicker. And now they're going to need a timeout. To come back in. Yeah. Probably had to leave because of equipment. And then you got to go out of play. So they just give us time to talk about it, not yeah. look like we know what we're doing. But, hey, what? We'll try and finish <laughs> uh, coach Coach's uh, interview 
earlier. Oh, there you go. First two years. And then the next two years, it was, I think we averaged four wins a season. Now, you know, over the last two seasons, you know, our regular season win average has been seven wins. So, I mean, when I take a step take a step back and look at it, I can say, you know what, we are making growth. And it's probably good that, you know what, some guys are disappointed because that means that the expectation level of where they want to be has changed from just being able to win a game to now thinking, hey, we, we belong with those teams that's going to the playoffs. And we feel that we're a good enough team to be able to go to the playoffs and play with those guys but I tell you what uh this this book game right here it's going to be big I mean you know I feel that any one of these teams really could could be a, a state playoff team that goes and wins games um that's the type of athleticism I see out there in the coaching that I see. and that's rack that well kind of, said kind of talk to him uh you know a team when he took over in his first tenure as coach winning you know one or two games a year now consistently past two years been up there at seven and, and knocking here in the championship game. This mm -hmm. kick is low, but it gets through. And it gets through, <laughs> yeah. Hey, it will take it however it goes it through. It needed the to uprising. be 10. It was 10 foot two, man. So 14 14 year score as they squeeze one through just barely here on their first drive in the third quarter. And Buchtel showing a bit of a, a kink in the armor as the, the passing game did well. 25-yard strike for Collins going over to Hall. And then the 45-yard uh, strike by Floyd just shows, you know, it, it could be boom or bust mm -hmm. with that speed, and, and you can't catch him once he gets through that line. Well, going back, I really like what Coach Hayes said in his mm -hmm. interview. He said, um, and I'm paraphrasing, but, but he said, you know, it, it, it used to be that we were like, hoping to win a game or, or it would be nice to get a win now it's an expectation that we is how you build a program yeah. that's how you build a program and he does he said they've done it a, a blueprint that our professional sports their professional football team in the in this area has not been able to to get they've gone backwards but they every step forward they take they seem to go backward you know they, they're stuck in neutral they haven't seen that growth he was saying that, you know, obviously these players felt that they they should be in the playoffs given their resume, and they're unhappy they didn't make it. And obviously they're they're here looking to redeem what was a loss that potentially took them out of the playoffs here to book a little earlier in the season. As they pick up this ball at the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back out to the 18, hand on That's his back. Good, good special teams. And it goes down at the 22-yard line, so book will take over there offensively. book had an interesting first half. Lino has played very well, running the ball very well and effectively, and also passing the ball um, with a high completion rate. Only three incompletes on this entire evening. And then we had McGinnis come in for a little while, and he ran the ball three times. Didn't really make any throws, uh, but we, we haven't really seen, seen him out there. They've just kind of gone all in on Lino being their quarterback here. And he's back in the shotgun once again. Four wide for him as he takes over here in the third quarter. Takes the ball and keeps it himself. Has a man in the backfield hunting him down. And that was going to be Reese again yeah. for... Yeah, you could say, what are you going to say, Joe? He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like it's going to be a run. Loss of a yard. So a sack. Well, looks like they had a spy on them that time on, on the on the read option. And rightfully so. He's got the vast chunk of their rushing yardage. Been their most effective runner. Whitson uh, just was six yards I had for mm -hmm. the first half. So Everything else has pretty much been Lino. Mm -hmm. Good yeah, defensive close there. Completes the pass, gets uh, two yards. <laughs> and that one goes to. Again to Ra Robinson. Anthony Sands in coverage. Which one? Zion. Mm -hmm. Or Christopher. Zion. Or Z3, maybe. That'd be a good nickname. That would be good. Like that. I put my trademark in for that. <laughs> Big third down and nine. They've been great on for third down in the first half. 
East only rushes four, but goes they get through, through, gets hit as oh, he sends it throw. away. And pass is going to be complete out at the 45-yard line. So that's going to move it 20 yards on that strike. It took a big hit. Bonnie Reese as he let that one go. For, for a guy that hasn't played a heck of a lot, he does a really good job staying in the pocket when, when the, the pressure is coming. And he's taken a couple big hits today, but delivered some great throws. Is that off to Zine on the top? Yeah, again. So Zine on the 20-yard catch. His fifth reception. Yeah. Well, that would be Robinson if it was fifth reception. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. Yeah. Number two up top. That's all right. Fifth reception for him and a small run here. Give him a couple yards. Lino gets a few there. 9.20 here in the third quarter. And as much as Bukto looked fantastic coming down the field and getting the score before the second half. East came out in the beginning of the third quarter with a just as nice drive. To get into the end zone, ties this one up, looking to throw right side completed and out of bounds for five yards. That was complete to number 15, Xavier Goldsby, his first reception. You know, usually I see 15. Yeah. Goldsby. I got him. No, no. Of course. And I'll say the one thing that the Bokto receivers do a good job is of catching the ball with their hands. You don't see them letting it get into their pads. Goldsby, a good, a good example right there. Oh, a big third down. And they smother it there. I'm not sure he gained anything on the, on the carry. As he handed the ball off, it looked to White, Whiteson. I cannot read the numbers. Yeah, it was Whitson. Yeah. I can't. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying. I love, I love their jerseys, but the gray is just, it's tough. The gray and the black, and then it, it doesn't really set it off. I got glasses. I have to use the binoculars the whole time to see. Fourth down and short. Looks like they are going to go for it. Ooh. So it could be a very big stand as they're just barely into East Territory with 8.23 here in the third quarter. Big play right here. Watch for the hard count. Hard count and could be a QB sneak. Here's the thing. They haven't really gone under center. Run right. Run left. They go right, and he's hitting the backfield. I'm not sure even with the second push he's nope. going to have enough there. No way. Top official comes in, and they're going to list him as no gain. They gave him a pretty good spot, and still no way. Who was on the carry there, Joe? It was number 42, Rayante Brown. They went to the, the big fullback, and he did not get it. So on the 45-yard wow, would you work for it right there? And they turn it over. <laughs> Both teams have been aggressive going going for it on fourth and short, but does not pay off this time. And the, another big play by the East defense. Given how well that they have played at times and how the offense, well, I might have punted on that one, but I understand the flake hole. Yeah, sure. And now East winning the battle of the line of scrimmage. Floyd pushes forward for seven. And this is just the opposite of the last game these two teams had where Bookdale kind of came out and they just won the battle up front in the second half and, and, and led. He still only led for a couple minutes in that game, but they kind of wore East down. There's a big defensive play. Nowhere to go for Floyd as he gets nothing on that one. Sets up third down. That was Floyd's 10th carry. Seventy-one yards so far. I Most really of it on one play. East does much better when they're on this side of the field because they can get the play in faster and get out of the huddle. Gives, <laughs> I know what you mean. Gives Collins a little more time just to look at where the defense is at. They've been late coming out of the huddle, 
on the other side of the field. A lot of pressure oh, that's a coming. Hold. Rolls right, has time, throws that's a the hold. ball. It is going to be caught. Flags are down. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I don't see. Looks like Collins is down, too. I don't see the flag, though. Where's the flag at? It's on the other side of the field. Oh, okay, I see it. Collins is still down. And, partner, I don't even know if he got hit. I think he, I think he's, he, he may have, but because I, I looked downfield, but I, I think maybe his knee caught kind of funny. He's writhing in pain right now. Yeah, we'll take a quick break here, Peter, as uh, we'll let the medical staff be able to take a look at him. Certainly, we wish him all the best. We'll take a quick break here. You're watching championship football right here on APS 15 with Dave Schick and Joe Picanti. <laughs> so holding penalty will bring them back 10 yards, as Joe mentioned. And uh, lucky, uh, we hope certainly, for Collins, who was able to come off the field underneath his own power. Pretty much almost on cue as we uh, took a break, he hopped up and walked off the field. Uh, so we'll look to see if he comes back out or not, or if they'll continue to tend to him on the sidelines, which I believe they are. Yeah, they're looking at his back, actually. He got maybe curled up on a little bit, and they're looking to down to his lower back. Who do we have under center now? Uh, looks like looks like nobody right now. <laughs> Put Floyd back there. Oh I wait, guess. yeah, no, here comes Kyrie Williams. He's like, oh, okay, I'm playing oh, quarterback now. Yeah. I thought I was playing receiver. Under I was lined up in the in the slot. Oh, the ball's over here. Okay, let me get. It. <laughs> Takes the snap, looking to throw on his first well, time out there, right over the center. Great catch. And able to get it in as it goes to Jones. And he'll have about nine on that one. They're still going to have to punt, but it, it flips the field a little bit. Who came in? Kyrie. A little bit of everything today. Yeah. Usually the running quarterback, but he shows he can sling it a little bit when he needs to. One for one. They're going to punt here. Yeah, tough, um, tough holding call that would have yep. been the first down that uh, Collins was able to complete. And it was obvious, and it didn't really help. <laughs> Enough for him to get a completion. Kicks this one away, left side. Hit at the 30, oh, takes a big bounce. bounce. And we'll go down to the 19-yard line from there. So with 5.30, they punt and send it the other direction. But hopefully, certainly, uh, Collins is able to come back Thank out and play and the rest of the second half here. And if you can avoid the big play from the Griffins, this is what Buchtel did to East the last time. They played field position with them. East was starting their drives on you know their average of the 20, 25-yard line. Buchtel was starting at midfield, and eventually, eventually, it ended up being with a field goal, but it, it flips the script, and that field keeps pushing back. The more plays you have in your own territory, the more pressure it is, because you got that short field on the other end. Alino all by himself in the shotgun, four wide, first and ten, uh -oh. pressure coming right out. Oh, they blew it, that's why. <laughs> that's the second time Reese has come flying through trying to Looks like he's going to just take the uh, take the big hit, and then the whistle's going, so he runs right by and gives him a little pat on on the shoulder or the chest as he flies by, as we'll have offsides for the uh, the Griffins. Not a lot of penalties in tonight's game, and that's why I think mm. we've had a nice flow mm, right. in comparison. About uh, I have five penalties overall between both of the teams. Um, yeah, I got, I got six. six. I missed that last holding, sorry. I was analyzing it. I just didn't write it down. Four wide again. First and 15 now. Has some pressure and coming out, and he'll have a sack down at the 10-yard mm -hmm. line. And they're just getting right in there. Not much time to throw. So Lino gets sacked for another five-yard loss, so now it turns into second and 20. Really plays into what you were saying when you – play the field position game two plays like that you're at second and 20 and you're on the 10 yard line if you had to punt from here your punter would be standing on the end of his end zone which creates other issues intensities, yeah urgencies craziness take it a long time to get this one off too doesn't have his 
Official doesn't have his hand up yet. Not yet. Wait. What? He's looking at his clock. Wait, Boy, that's my, my clock. That's my, my that's clock my, for you. Oh, time phone. out. That's my phone. Okay. I, I think know. maybe <laughs> Coach Powers and his company felt that, you know, we, don't, we can't afford to give up five more here. Uh, I was going to go over. Oh, second, uh, second team, all cities team. I think I have one more uh, interview. Oh, okay. You do that. The rest of the interview with uh, Coach Hayes. Uh, but I know we we got we got to turn it around this game. That that that, that loss that we took uh, by two points was it was, was a tough loss. I think it kind of time we played. Them, I said. All right. Thank, thank a specific player or two players that you could mention that have really had growth this year throughout the broadcast that we're going to see on the field. I would say uh, we have a young man and we have a lot of guys who've made growth. But I would say we have a young man named Tanner Kelly. Uh, he wasn't a starter on defense uh, as a freshman, sophomore, or junior. He started on the offense for the tight end last year, primarily just a blocker. But he took the offseason so seriously in the weight room. He came in the summertime, and we told him we got a plan for him to play defense. And at five foot 10, 190 pounds, he's out there going lights out, playing defensive end. And, I mean, he's done some things this year that you normally wouldn't see from a first-year starter on defense. I mean, the kid had – he amassed something like 50. 50 tackles and 14 sacks and even had an interception, you know, as, as a defensive end. So for his first year being able to do that, uh, I just think it's amazing. I and mean, it just says that hard work pays off. You saw that there a little bit as uh, another big sack for this defense. I don't think it was Tanner Kelly, was it? <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm going to tell you what, this, this defense has peeled back and they are just coming after the quarterback. Now, they're not – they're not respecting the, the running game other than just keying on, you know, and number 55 has been in the backfield on numerous plays. Trey Kelly's been getting, they're getting great jump to the football. And now, just like we said, that field position game, third and a country mile here for Buchtel. Third and 28, throwing out of his own end zone. Short pass completed at the eight-yard line. And he'll go out at the nine, so a seven-yard completion. I, I cannot. Just to give him room. Who we got here? Is that goalie Buchanan? Mm hmm. His fifth target finally hauls one in. That's the end of my interview. So we'll get do second. Uh, Nine straight completions for Lino. But they've all been safe type throws. They really haven't gone up the field much. Oh, this is tough. Digging it from the top of the Z. Another good snap, though. Kicks it away. They don't really come after it too much here. Last time they did that, they dropped it. It gets up to the 42-yard line, so they'll take over from there. While we switch out, we'll go over the honorable mentions on the uh, all-city football team. Marquez Jacobs or Buchtel. Kirtland Robbins of Buchtel. Uh, these Two are from East, Aaron Johnson and Trey Kelly, who uh, the coach recently mentioned. Uh, from Ellett, you have Dylan <coughs> Brower Cox, Brower Sox, sorry, uh, Trevor Pittman, also from Ellett, uh, Cedric Harris and T. Harris from Firestone, Calvin Dudley from Kenmore uh, Garfield, and from North, you have Dante Black and James Brown in the honorable mention here for the All City football team. Congratulations to them. Now East takes over. Things seeming to be clicking as he goes through. Floyd will get six on that carry, quickly coming through, looking like he's almost in a second gear that others don't have. A good patience on that run, too. He kind of stretched it out a little bit, Le'Veon Bell style, and hit the hole when, when it wasn't big, but when it came just a little crease, he got out there for a nice gain on first down. Kyrie Williams, I want to mention, still in the game as they're still looking at Collins over there on that sideline. comes in on the City Series Championship and they hand off again to Floyd who will gain two. Now in his 12th carry. Another big third down coming up. Like, I had one about here that I took to the house. Can I get another one of those? Collins on the sideline and standing up. He, we, we might see him again yet in this one. Continue to check him out, but it seems to be getting ready to come back in the ball game. 
Nope, no, he's taking off the shoulder okay. pad. No, I think he's going to put on some rib pads, maybe. Okay. Looking to hand the ball off, and Floyd will be close. I don't think he got it. They're going to give him a yard. Um, but it still sets up fourth down and two. I think they might be going for it here. What do you think? <laughs> I could see them punting again almost. No. <laughs> The defense, they could. The you defense could. would be pretty good. I, as I've if, seen, if you can I've get seen teams the, punt the from five. here. In high school, there were times we punted from here. If you could maybe, pin them down. Maybe not on fourth and one, though. That's fourth, fourth and, and about a yard and a half. That's fourth and two. A yard and three-fourths. Yeah. And you Agree to disagree. And you don't have your starting quarterback in to, to do much, even though he, he threw for a completion his first time in, what did Williams. I think we have a timeout to discuss it, and we do. City Series uh, football right here on APS 15, supported by Akron Public Schools, offering the International Black Gloria program at Firestone High School. It's a rigorous two-year program designed to meet the highest academic standards for any high school student in the world. Akron Public Schools at akronschools.com. Looking at the All-City football team, we'll go to the second team now. You want to read this one? Yeah, here? I got it. Yeah. How, about that, how about that second team? From Bookdoll. Winford Dowdy, Zaire Keen, Mike Lino, Brandon McGinnis, Cyan Robinson, and Orel Williams. From East, Ryan Collins, Darius Reese, Deshaun Robinson, Lamonte Stevenson, and Kyrie Williams. From Ellett, Griffin Malik, Darren Miller, Caleb Menard, Trey Payne, Tarek Williamson. From Firestone, Lafayette Johnson, Kevon Lewis, Mitchell Riggins, Greg Stevens. Kenmore Garfield, Lamont Evans, Brandon Moody Cardi, Carter, Elon William, and from North, Andreas Clay and Jeff Daverney. And interesting, when you look at the second team, Mike Lino in there as a defensive back, sure. not as the quarterback, and he's out here doing, uh, certainly making a case for himself if they can pull out the victory for a Fleury's Cafe signature player of the game. Uh -huh. This one now, fourth and two. And a high snap, has to catch it, doesn't have time to Really run, I think, up the center where he wanted to go. He stretches out, and it's not a great spot. It looks yep. like they did not convert it. The high snap kind of did him in yep. on the timing. On the run is going to be number four, Williams, again. And Christopher Robinson doing a great job of getting low and tackling. That's one of the ones like, you sure there's a flag down on the field or something that would help us out with this? No need to measure that one. Got to the line of scrimmage, maybe, maybe a yard. I gave him a yard, but certainly we'll shorter yard. than two. But the high snap took out all the advantage he had as, as Bukta was coming for him. And these defenses have been pretty darn good, making the big plays. Man, if you look at where he's putting the ball and you look at where the first down marker is, that would have been a first down. Well, they moved it probably, right? I d they shouldn't have. They had to get to the 34, I'm sorry, to the 33-yard line, and that's where the ball is. Okay. Not even worth the measurement. I no. guess not. You must have that it yellow looked, line. It looked a yard it. short, but then when he set the ball up for Bukto, it looks like they got that yard. Uh, it's very confusing from this vantage point. Oh, they're Lino going deep, taking a shot. That one overthrown by a good 10 yards. And he looks like he might have had a step on him. First incompletion that they've had. Pass intended for, Pass intended for two that Keen. time. Zaire Keen. First incompletion in a long time for Lino. He's now 9 of 12 passing. For 105 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, it's uh, certainly... You know, not often that we, we sit here in a championship game, let alone a City Series game, where the quarterback completes 75% of his passes. A lot of them, these safe throws, but it's, it's not been an so ineffective. 16th attempt. That's his favorite target, Zion Robinson. Four-yard completion. But, I mean, usually it's, especially in this conference, been very run centric and and the quarterbacks maybe attempt uh, you know eight to ten attempts all game he's got 16 and we're not even in the fourth quarter yet as we approach it here but completing 75 percent of his passes 
16 attempts, certainly bucking the trend. Another one, and, and he gets another completion. He'll oh, be short of the first down. That was a great down. play by Kyrie Williams. And Who'd that go to again? That Robinson. was to Robinson again, but there's a flag down. Uh-oh. Oh, you know, it's, they've been so clean, and what a big penalty for the Dragons, roughing, roughing the, the passer. Yeah. Roughing the passer is what was called on the field. Essentially negates the great defensive open field tackle by Williams and leads to a big, big, big turn of events here. On the end of the run. And they didn't call a late hit. They said blow to the head. I, I so couldn't see it from so up here. So those are going to count. Those are both going to count. And mm -hmm. then 15 yards on top of that. You got it, baby. I so just, give I him another I completion. I just wanted to let you know. Well, thanks for that. 18 seconds left in this third quarter. Here on a really nice night. Probably going to be the last play of the quarter here. As Lino looks, pressure uh -oh. coming from behind Goodness. him. He doesn't see it, and that'll be a fantastic sack coming from the other side. Jay Sean Robinson on the blitz. Yeah, coming from that weak side backer spot. I mean, like a cannon. So that'll do it here for the third quarter as we go into the fourth. An additional touchdown by East to start off this quarter makes it 14-14 as we go into the final one. I want to let you know that City Series football right here on EPS 15 supported with, uh, by Akron Public Schools with opportunities in visual arts including drawing, painting, ceramics, sculpture, for photography, and computer design. Akron Public Schools at akronschools.com. We'll also have our flurries Cafe signature player of the game, and certainly it's in the mix as to who it would be. Can make a case on both sides here in the tie score. Certainly, uh, both teams have uh, very deserving performers. Flurry's Cafe is located in Cuyahoga Falls. They have great signature pancakes. So good that we have a player of the game named after them, their signature pancakes. They're located in Cuyahoga Falls on 2202 Front Street. Great place for breakfast, 7 to 3, Monday through Saturday. We need to get our, our signature pancake play of the game, too. <laughs> yeah, like a like a huge hit. Or yeah. Completes the pass behind the line of scrimmage. And not a lot to, to work with there as Robinson will lose uh, three yards on the completion. And we talked about the high completion rate. Certainly that one. You could, drive, you could drop that one. But in the first half, it was, you know, 10 yards, 7 yards. In the second half, it's been 2 yards, 7 yards. They've done a nice job of giving the cushion, but then not over-pursuing and mm -hmm. making those open field tackles. He's going to have to throw the ball down the field here, 3rd and 17. Can they do it again on 3rd down? Because I would think the rush is coming. Last 3rd down they had resulted in a sack and a punt. This time has time, goes over the middle. And he'll be very close. Where is he going to fall? The spot oh, says first down. Effort. I don't know. But Ooh, it's going to be close. A little Maybe push after there. No flag out for that. I think 17. Yeah, they gave it to him. No, not yet. Uh, I would measure. Down. He is going to measure. Who caught this one? Who else? Robinson. Yeah, eight catches. Eight catches, partner. You know, like a PPR league, you'd be doing it. Uh, yeah, the he's got about 26 First points down. right now. Just He got the touchdown. That helps. He's got two plays of over 20 yards. 84 yards on eight receptions. That'd be 8.4. That'd be 16 point, 23.4 in our league right now. Oof. <laughs> First down was uh, the signal. They did yeah, not measure. First down. They had to just say oh, it was over. Look. Let me get I the mag. You, you called it. it. You're usually pretty good at that. If There's one thing you're good at. Had made the <laughs> <laughs> if he had made the tackle right away, might have saved it, but they danced around back and forth in good second effort. Lino goes for the long ball. This one, nowhere close. That one, did, like. Nowhere close to the intended target. It's almost like you were playing. You know what happened there? That's when you were playing on the street. 
back before all the uh, wires were buried, and that one hit the wire. Because <laughs> <laughs> both the receiver and the DB were looking the other way, and it landed off the wire incomplete. Keen, his second uh, target here in the second half. He's got uh, six targets, only one catch out of those, though. Yeah. So that one not really a catchable one as it sets up second and 10 now as we're at 10.44 here in the fourth quarter. Notched up at 14, Dave Shake, Joe Bukanski. City Series Championship right here on APS 15. Both these teams played in the regular season. And That's dead. Another procedure. Booked a won it. Last second field goal. And certainly left a very bitter taste in the mouth of the Dragons team that was about a point and a half out of the making the playoffs in the standings. They were number 10. The second loss really. They finished the second like loss 10 and 11, yeah. something like that. Now, just was a, a weird couple of weeks in that, in that tough division three region. Is that region nine? Most of those games playing starting tomorrow. Oh. St. V's was, I mean, St. V's was like 13th and beat Maslin and jumped up to like 6th, a game that they trailed virtually the whole game and got themselves in the playoffs with that. You know, going to run, has some space, getting away, good tackle. Mm -hmm. Keeps it from a big gain and just gives him 6 on the run. He's got 12 attempts. Some of them were sacked certainly at the end of the third quarter. But has 74 yards at halftime and has not seen a lot of help running the ball since then. His, just his second positive gain here in the second half. Another big third down play coming up. Third and eight for the Griffins. Want to stay away from penalties. Yeah. As they've Both sides. Giving them some of them. Good football play here. As we're under 10 minutes here in the fourth. Tied up, Lena looking left, looking, gonna run. Needs a lot of help and gets back to the line of scrimmage. And again, just keying in on Lino and taking things away is a number we've called many times, number 55. We believe it's Reese from and our other. Yeah, and that one partner became because of the pressure on previous plays. He had Robinson open on an out route right at the sticks. Not, not for long, but he had already decided to tuck it and run. That's going to bring up a big fourth down play. I don't know if I would go for this one either. Now from 31, too far to kick the field goal, too close to punt. They're going to go for it. Oh, biggest play of the ball game right here so far. It's like uh, Lino tying the shoe. It's an inclination that he's going to run, but we're going to take a timeout to talk about it. Turn out. And, and you know what? I might take the delay of game here and just try to pin them. It's been that kind of game. It's a, Let's your defense win it with a shorter field, even. But you got you just their punt, their punter's good. I I, I try to be pin them within if, the ten yard if, line. If Coach Powers comes out and, like you said, try and take the delay a game, but try and get them off sides instead of this long fourth down and eight. Know, yeah, it's only fourth and three. It's only fourth and I mean it's only eight yards and they've. Let's see, they got one. Two, three, four, five. We got six completions in the game over that number. Uh, I don't know. Not as many here in the second half. As he's had a great completion rate, but has had some time getting enough time to get a completion. As the pressure has come after him pretty quickly here. They'll come back out. Yeah, 13 for 17 on the day. 126 here yards. for the Dragons as they the DBs flip the side of the field. They get there in time, but in what? And now we have an offensive movement on the line, and it looks like what was a left tackle. I yeah. can't see his number. He's hitting his head though. Uh, I think 70. I think the, I think the guys like you got to let them get set. They have to be set for a second. Maybe a little too backwards. quick on the count, and that can happen. That can happen with a different signal caller with cadence, because everybody's cadence is a little bit different. You know, some pause before the set in the hut or the set in the go. Others, I was always told, you have to do it with the same rhythm. 
And then that's how you get guys to jump off sides because you change that rhythm. Hot. Hot, hot. Pizza. <laughs> they do quick kick it. Gosh, they are in our headsets. I love the call. Uh, I'm not sure that was the original call until after we had the fourth or third team. Yeah. yeah, we said take the delay game. We can take the procedure instead. Um, <laughs> I don't it's, think they took the procedure. It's they weren't trying to do it. It's conservative, but East has hit all of one big play tonight. You know, one good pass play and one big running play. Your defense has been your dominating force. Let's put them on the field with a short field. I think East would have done the same thing in that position. Mm -hmm. Both teams are trusting their defenses to make a big play. East has already got a touchdown on a fumble recovery. Well, it looks like... Williams is on the sideline, so does that mean that Collins is back in? Wow. Joe, it does. It look. sure does. So, as much as you want to pin it back, they do have their starting quarterback back out there. Motion coming down your screen, sets, and they hand the ball off. Breaks uh -oh. the tackle, Floyd right side, one on one, big stiff arm, gets by him and out of bounds. And just like that, they went from the 10 yard line to the 29 yard line. So much line. for that punt. <laughs> Devonier Floyd sees a little bit of daylight, breaks one tackle. If he gets that second level, watch out. It was interesting even just watching that one, how he was going to take that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Do you, does he try to take the contact? Does he try to get away from him and, and create the space to get a couple more yards that way? Great, great counteraction on that run, too. That wasn't, wasn't a run straight off tackle. It was a run where he cut it back against the grain. Just one little cut. This time he cuts it the other way and gives not a modest gain, but they're not three and four yard losses anymore. That's the difference. Gets two yards on that one going to the left side of the field. And I'll say two. Goes over 100 so yards with that carry, 101 yards on these 15 carries. You, you look at it, and because the officials aren't putting it further out and shortening that side of the field. Is that benefiting certainly East who likes to run outside of the tackles in this situation? Uh -huh. Gives him a little more space on that right side. Brimage goes into the backfield this time. He takes the ball. Oh, nice little stutter step and he's got daylight. He's at the 50 down to the 44 yard line. And just like that, they took right off. He's got 25 uh, yards. Yeah. And that goes to Brimage, who has been very quiet. Yeah, offensively, no catches today for him. Defensively, very active in the defensive secondary. They're going quick here. Floyd back in after a quick blow. Oh, they're getting much better push. Yeah, those those linemen are getting downfield, whereas Buchtel was getting into the backfield. I remember, the Buchtel defense has been out there quite a bit, especially in the second half. Inside seven minutes now. Ball back in Buchtel territory. Could we have our first OT of the year? I'm, I know Peter's hoping for it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Hands oh, nice off, cut. Breaks a great tackle at the line of scrimmage to get to two yards. But and that's what Pursuit does. He has to make a great play just to get a couple. That goes to Reese, we think? No, it was Floyd. What? Yep. Oh, sorry. I thought it was a 23. Good old gray numbers. My mistake. Brimage is going to come in here on third down and replace Floyd. Got two wide receivers at the top, one at the bottom. If they don't get this, it'll be decision time for them, too. Mm -hmm. Looking to hand the ball to Brimage. Oh. oh, great job being patient. Finds the hole right on through for a first down. He's got uh, eight yards and a little bit of pushing afterwards. He ain't going down, that's why. <laughs> I don't 
see any flags, but we will have a first down as they move in to the 29-yard line. So Brimage just giving him the breaks, though, but they've been two huge plays. Great job running by Brimage. Gets the ball, has two blockers in front of him, and just takes that little hesitation yeah. to go right between them, but it took a second for it to open up for there to be a spot for him to go. I'm trying to teach my basketball players that. Just give them like you're going to go slow, then blow by. Just give them a little stutter step. And then you can you don't have to cross over if you do that. Sometimes you can just give them a little, let them just kind of get on their heels for a second. That's what Brimage did. Another good run here on first down by Brimage. Give the ball to the guy with the hot hand. Oh, and they don't get off the field. He's going quick on them. And coach is <laughs> He's like, what are you? The referee's like, what are you doing? He's like, you're lucky there's a flag down. I can have to give you one of these sideline warnings. <laughs> sideline, he was on the numbers. Oh, they gave him the timeout. Flag down. Does that mean no flag? Uh, I can't imagine if you put the flag down that he I didn't wave the flag. He picked it up, and I don't see him walk it off. Uh, maybe they'll talk about it and do it after the timeout. No, I think they're giving the timeout instead of the substitution practice because they had 12 guys on the field. The, the guy was not even close to getting off. Take the time out here with 5:19. Tied 14-14. I don't know if Coach Powers is waving his hand. <laughs> I think they're. I don't know. They're He's got his whole entire coaching staff out on the field off the timeout, which would be fine. And as you mentioned, the, the refs are, they're talking about it. Which one occurred first? Right. Well, you can't give them, you can't give them the timeout. And then. You can. But they were, if I the mean. the flag was down. Yeah, but you would have to mark it off first because they called the timeout, I think, to try to avoid the penalty. I think that's what they're talking about, that they're going to pick up that flag. He probably was on the sideline. But they already marked official. it off because it should have been second and four. Yeah, they're okay. But it's what we said. They would just listen to us. It's going to be second. Yeah. So I think he came to the official down here on the sideline, called timeout. Right. He's throwing the flag up there. And they had to confer saying, hey, he called timeout. Before, Again, man. hey, they got together. Yeah. These guys are not doing a terrible job tonight. And that is no, they're doing a good job. They're not doing a terrible job. They're I said they're not doing a terrible job. I know. That's you, not you really could, a compliment, though. Be, is yeah, it? you should be positive. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Well, it's been a bad week for me. You know, that's, <laughs> I shouldn't bring my personal problems into the, into the broadcast. Hey, <laughs> you, you haven't been terrible this week. Uh, I've been pretty terrible. Thanks, yeah, Dad. I've actually I appreciate been, I've been the, pretty uh, terrible. I appreciate the <laughs> nice compliment you had for me that I'm not terrible. Thanks, Coach Belichick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, we're pretty good. Uh, so fourth down okay. and four is going to turn into Floyd getting five yards and getting a first down. Denver Floyd is not bad right back. Uh, he's not terrible. He is Everybody definitely not terrible. Everybody else no, is terrible. I, you know what? The NBA is terrible. The super, so-called super teams, yeah. They, they Not that I joined a super team at the end of my career. Clyde Dexter or Akeem Olajuwon. That was fun. So good work, bro. You're too late. Yeah. Timing is everything. Uh, I think after, I mean, he came at uh, trying to win a back-to-back -back when it made a difference. I mean, Clyde and... Hakeem won it the year before, so we went back to back. So. Good tackle there. Floyd for uh, Carey. Floyd By number 50. And I got to give number 53, David Richardson. He has been in uh, several, several plays tonight. <laughs> 19 carries, 113. And a touchdown for Devin near Floyd. Hard earned tonight. 
be playing his home games right here. With about as many people watching. Stop. <laughs> Zips I mean, get, the Zips could still win the Mac East. I know. Someone posted, like, well, once the Zips are good again, they'll get people in the stands. Like, oh, they are pretty good. They're in first place. Well, they. Loses a two on the carry there. And it, it just hasn't been a flashy first place. Well, and the, and the problem that, and the problem is the good is you can watch them on TV for the next four weeks, but the, the bad is Mac action takes place on Tuesday and Wednesday nights to get those guaranteed TV dollars. But, I mean, you don't, you don't get crowds, especially in late November. Yeah, Tuesday night. It was a night like tonight, though. Well, here's the thing. You can say all you want about the crowd. I mean, that even if you took these top two tiers off the stadium, it wouldn't make the crowd any bigger. Uh, make it look bigger. It would make it look bigger, but it wouldn't make it – you wouldn't change the amount of people there. Great protection Big third and 12. He's so it to nobody. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it doesn't change the amount of people that come to the game. To me, when you're still on the field, and, and I was even down there before the game, you know, the, the stadium still looks beautiful. It's still great to play on the turf. I mean, the facility's still nice, even though you don't have, uh, you know, a sold-out stadium. You still have the, you'd still have the same amount of people coming to the game, whether you had 22,000 seats or you had 8,000 seats. Well, now, I, would it look more full at 8,000? Yes, but you're still only having 8,000 people show up for the you game. You miss the rubber ball, don't you? A little bit. <laughs> Why do you, uh, you, just, I do too. you just see right through me, Joe? Right. The 40 mile an hour winds. Oh. Big fourth down for Collins. He's got plenty of time, but nobody open. He's got to throw this one away. Throw it away. He just flipped the field 10 yards for the Griffins and a big, big sack and another big hold. De'Air Blash trips him up. And, and I like how you said earlier in the game is even if it's a bad play, you have to throw the ball to see what happens. At best, maybe you get an incomplete and they get the ball on the 22-yard line. At worst, you get a, sh a chance. I mean, I'm not saying throw a, a pick six like right in somebody's line, but throw the ball in the end zone where only a guy can catch it or can throw a jump ball. Yeah, it's a little risky, but no risk, no reward. Hello. Uh, can you can you let the trick or shooters in? <laughs> uh oh! Throws the ball up there and intercepted Short. at the 38-yard line, and he's still on his feet. He goes down on the other side of the field. So one play, and Lino, after 21 attempts, throws his first interception. And that one goes uh, yeah, to Yassine Franklin. Yassine Franklin, we called that name earlier in our other broadcast. It just sounds familiar, making a big play. And he gets the interception. And gets it on their side. So the fourth down yeah. makes a, a, a bad play, but you get the ball right back. He had one-on-one and -on -one a little bit of separation. That one just way underthrown. 2.47, and it's going to take one big play from the Dragons. You just have the feel that this like book defense has been the on the field so much that can, 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 you keep, can you keep relying on? Because at this point, I, if you're the Griffins, I think you'll be happy getting to overtime because the ball, again, not in your favor. Although if they can get it back, but they don't have any timeouts. Mm -hmm. And if I'm East, I'm just trying to pop one play and hopefully not letting Bookdo get the ball back come down to another last second field goal. Collins had some more time last time he threw. Of course, he didn't throw it to any of his wide receivers. And unfortunately, well, they're going to throw. Gonna throw here. Moves out of the pocket right side. Has a man in double coverage. Not able to yeah. get it to Good Brimage. throw away, though. Brimage was, might have had three guys on him there. That's when you have to go max, pr max protect and you can't send five guys out. You know, you send two or three guys in the pattern. You get safety help. Um, good coverage by the Griffins. Surprised that they, they aired it out there on first down, but they were not fooled. I would not be surprised if this one, though, goes to Floyd. He's had big plays in the past. He has a 19-yarder here in the second half, and, of course, the fantastic 45-yard touchdown in the first half. Over 100 yards rushing so far in tonight's ball game, and certainly would love to make rush number 20 uh, take it to the Akron. 
spell out on there. They hand the ball to him. Doesn't look like nope. he's going to go this way. <laughs> going the wrong direction. Loses six on that one. And his last two carries have been for losses. There's another front first teamer, Tyrese Littlepage, making a big play. Only problem for the Griffins is they can't stop the clock here. If I'm East, I mean, here's, here's the disadvantage for the Dragons. They do not have the edge in the kicking game. Uh, no. So, I think if you're East, you want to try to win this thing in regulation. Yes. Like I said, advantage in, in overtime goes to the team with the better kicking game. Well, you got to stop, stop them, too, because you, you go get for first the 25. Down here. I mean, Peter, yeah, I'm talking about overtime. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? We can still have three scores. The hard thing is, is, is I almost feel you're, you're wanting to go to Floyd here, but they had good success when they went to Hall passing the game, or even Brimage. Those are mismatches. Time for a trick In play. the passing game. I'll tell you what game I was at last week. Um, Maybe have Williams our high school team has a big time running back. Well, they were selling out, selling out on the run. And keying on him because he's, he's getting the ball 30 times a game, right? So we ran the, the handoff, busted it to the line, flea flicker, wide open. Because there's eight guys selling out to him. All it takes is one of those guys on the back end to pinch a little bit. Touchdown signal is what, Touchdown. I mean, we're not on TV, Joe, so I have to describe people at home. No, it's because we have, we're we are on TV, we're just not on TV. Well, I mean, they can't see us on TV. All right, so Face third, made for radio. Third, third down and 16, that's what my mom said. <laughs> <laughs> Looks to throw over the middle into double coverage. And incomplete, overthrown by a good 10 yards. That would have been as good as a punt that right there. That one went to Hall. <laughs> that would have, if they wanted that pick, that would have yeah. been at the two-yard line. Imagine if he would have caught it, kept running in the end zone. Oh boy. Nobody's got a timeout left. They got a punt, and if I'm the Griffins, guess what I'm doing? Bringing the house. Oh, what a spot the fake punt. They, they might not send the house because they might be eerie of the fake. No, they won't fake here. Fourth and 16. That'd be ballsy. From the 46? Yeah. <laughs> you playing to win or you just, come on. Kenny Rogers, he's, he's a gambler. He's already had one that he put on the one yard line. Now it's special teams. Got to get the punt off and if you're booked, you got to take care of the football. And they've already dropped a punt as well. Perfect snap. Kick is away. It's high. And it is high. He's going to catch it. Almost got a tackle right where he caught it at. Would have been at the 16, but he does a great job returning it <laughs> to the 29. Because his legs are still moving. And a great job of, of catching it. I think most people would have wanted almost to call the fair catch. He catches it and then evades that first tackler that really could have potentially got him down or popped the ball loose. Threshold goalie. Buchanan was not playing for the tie. He was like, I'm not fair catch. I am not Leo Lewis, the fair catch specialist. <laughs> Another great sign. <laughs> He's like, I am going to try to make a play here. And now it's interesting. The ball at the 28. Haven't had a lot of big plays in the second half. Do you take a shot? You threw an interception on your last play. Well, you got no timeouts. Quarterback so draw, any, maybe? Any, anything you're going to – you want to – Try to go to maybe that short side of the field so you can get back out of bounds. Looking to pass, has time, throws uh -oh. it up, ball's tipped. And are they going to say it's a fumble? There's no ruling, there's no whistle, and he's in the end zone. And we're going to have a get touchdown. It. Oh my goodness. It's a fumble by Buchtel. I think it went, it, it go goes backwards. It goes back 28 yards as they kick it. It goes into the end zone for a touchdown. An unbelievable play. And I have a feeling we might talk about it. I don't know. It looked like he was in the forward motion of throwing. But there's no people coming together. It'd be a 28-yard fumble recovery in the end zone. It wasn't really that I far, that but he kicked went, it into the end did zone. Did it go forward? I, 
I did go back. I, there's not a lot of argument from the sidelines. I think it might have went backwards. When it went up, I'm like, that's going forward. But I thought it when it landed, forward. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it was so there, high. There, there's no one even talking about it. Huge hit. Yeah, instant replay. Six points. It was Lamonte Stevenson that jumped on it, and it almost went out of the end zone. Yeah. Which would have been. He, well, because he, he tried to kick it kind of away from the other defense. Defenders. Which, what would that have been? Would that, would that have been a touchback or a safety? I think it would have been a Safe. touchback. And they we go off sides. Of so, like we said, there's going to be some more scoring. Two defensive scores in one game. Unbelievable as they come across. And I really thought they hit them during the throwing motion. But I guess they're saying it went backwards. And was a fumble. East players go after it, kind of kick the ball to about the top of the K in the end zone there and then recover it, barely keeping it inbounds. They move forward a half a yard on the offsides play call by Buchtel. They'll come after this one as well. They have it up. Lots of people there. A low kick again, but it's it goes good. up and through. And they take the lead here with 144 left in the fourth quarter. A thrilling one here. And, Joe, did you even get the person that got the? Yes. It was. Here, let me work it. Amante Stevenson. He gets the touch defensive touchdown, the second one. And things have shifted by a lot. They'll have to take the kickoff return now from wherever they get it with 144. They were going to have to go pretty far anyway. But presumably they're probably going to kick the ball far again to pin them back even further. And they have no timeouts remaining due to the Griffins here. So a thriller in the opposite way so far compared to the regular season where Bookdale came back and was able to win. East almost played themselves back into the game now. You kind of saw it going back where maybe, maybe Bookdale was going to come down the field and take another win away from the Dragons, but the defense and just an odd play overall. It's two fumble recoveries for a touchdown. And I mean... But the bottom line is it's been the East defense in the second half has shut out the Bookdale Griffins thus far. Still 144 left, and even though Bookdale doesn't have any timeouts, they have been able to throw the football. The problem, though, has been the pass rush here in the second half. That has been the difference in the game. They kick it as far as they can. He'll return it at the six-yard line and come out to the right side. He's at the 20, 25, and wrapped up there as he goes down. On the tackle was going to be Javon Jones. Good and discipline. they are so pumped up. Good discipline by the Dragons. They're not, not staying in their lanes. Now Bookdale's got to go a long way here. They've got to go the distance now as they'll take over on the 25-yard line, roughly 10 yards further than they had to before when it was a tie ball game. And I think, I think the key tonight to, you know, not having McGinnis for the Griffins has been their lack of, besides when the quarterback's running, just a, just a, a running game to balance things out. So they had, uh, you know, just looking at it, you had uh, Whitson with a fumble in the first half. And in the second half so far, you've had Lino with a fumble and an interception. Offside lined up by the Dragons, so five yards. Booked will take five yards with no time going off the clock. 134 here in the fourth quarter. <coughs> They're down a touchdown. Lino gets it, looking right, has time, steps into the pocket. Last time had a great throw. He's got him. He has it again. Unbelievable throw. And he catches it at the 30 yard line. <laughs> I'm like, why are they going deep? That's why. 55-yard <laughs> catch as Lino gets it. And who did he go to? It went to number two. Zen. Zaire Keen. Zaire Keen, sorry. 55 yards on that one. And they are in striking distance now. 125 here in the fourth quarter. Looking. Lino left. Out of the pocket. Rolling right. Tries oh, to go back left. Away. He's got to throw it away. And he does. It's incomplete. 
pass intended for Keene again. Yeah, good decision there. Keene has had eight targets, two catches for 65 yards. It's 55. That's a good way to do it. 23 attempts for Alino in the ball game. Feels like it feels like over time to be partner. I, I'm not feeling it yet. I, I think East is going to get a sack here, and that's going to. Oh, okay. I think East is going to come after. Well, him. Let me tell you, we're not picking. Keep we looking. are definitely not picking a player in the game until this one's over. Yeah. He's got to get off the field quickly, and he does. Do the Dragons. Lena looking it over, looking left, has time. Pressure coming in front of him. He steps up, and he goes to the side of the end zone. Wide open. And he was wide open, <laughs> catches it just on the other side for a touchdown. That one from 25 yards out. How about that answer by the Griffins? They're not done. And they get the touchdown. 196 yards passing now for Lino. And how about Robinson? Nine catches. 75-yard drive for a TD. And who'd that go to, Robinson? Yeah, nine catches, two touchdowns. They need this extra point big time as they are slow to bring in the offensive line help. 113 yards receiving for Robinson. It is. is up. And it is no, no good. good. Oh my Wide goodness. left as he can't get it through the upright. East is celebrating on the other side, 107. And they still have the lead 21 to 20 as the strong part of the the Bookdale kicking game just on the left side this of the upright, it. and yep. they are meeting again. And this might just be a meet saying, hey, we need to keep all of our eyes because it's going to get on. Here comes an odd. onside kick here. There's, I mean, you have to go on sides here because no team has any timeouts. And how about that? The first game decided by the kicking game, and the second game, East, who, who was a disaster with their punt game in the first meeting, um, and Bukta, whose special teams was not only with the return game, but with Devin West, misses an extra point, and now it, they have to go onside kick here, or East is going to win this thing. They got about eight guys on this side. Will they dare kick it to the left side where they're really late over there? Um, I tell you what I would do. Catch and fall. They got four guys over there on the left side. They have three. They have all their guys here on the right. On the bottom of your screen, yeah. Yeah, I'd kick it to the top of the screen. Uh, now they're evening back out. Okay, again. It's, yeah, he's like, get, yeah, they still got more guys down here at the bottom. Oh, do you go right down the center like that long one? No, they, they go, go left to, side. Yeah, look, uh, come Hits. get it. Come get it. And Nobody's it's all around. It. Buckle's right there. Buckle's gonna get it. Oh, oh, wait, gonna have is it out ball. of bounds? If it's out I'm of bounds, not sure. It's very close to being out of bounds. But it looks like they were in bounds, but I'm not sure if his foot hit out of bounds when he touched it, which is certainly possible. No official signal here yet as the Griffins are down one point. I think it's East ball. I think it went out of bounds, but nobody for East came and got that ball. They were kind of waiting for it on the high hop, a beautiful onside kick. You can as see it by the once. player reactions that East has the ball. Yeah. I mean, it was a great kick. It looks, it, it looks like he almost went out of bounds, came the back first in guy to The first it. guy didn't come up with it clean, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, it kicked. And if, and if you're the Dragons, this is something you're allowed to do, which I wish you weren't allowed to do. You can hit that thing out of bounds. It's your ball. Yeah. I think it's it was coming up there, and it, and it was they recovered wow. it, but they were on the line. And so just, now they're in just the regular formation. They'll need, what, three plays. We're talking a game of inches. Oh, boy, and that's a penalty right away. You know what? Uh, East wasn't set, though, so it's going to offset. I'm not. Yep. Just the one. Just the one yep. penalty. So they'll the, move the back. The receiver was not on the line of scrimmage. He kind of came in like, oh, I should get on the line of scrimmage, I guess, before we hike this one. But just inches. The, the extra point misses by inches. Mm -hmm. And they miss getting the on the onside kick by inches, and what? A, uh oh. <laughs> and nobody wants their season to end, <laughs> partner. That's what it is. No, this is against Bookdale. Yeah. <laughs> they, I think, yeah, they were offsides. 
And let's not let's not end this thing yet. I've seen stranger things. I've, all they got to do is get the snap. Now, they haven't dropped now, a snap all year. But now it's back to first down and ten. Just it's. You would think this is the easiest formation. And Bookdale is coming hard across the line. Yeah. And, you know, officials, They're they, getting they in know there. what's going on. It's going to be one more snap, and that's it. Mm -hmm. One more snap without any altercations. Yep. And, and they're talking with some of the players now. And I, I understand. It's been a great game. Yeah, but. But you got to, you know, you had your chance. You had, you had the kick. You could have gone for two. That would have been crazy. That would have been uh -huh. a push power thing. Well, After the great offensive set, you might have wanted to go for two, but I understand kicking trying to go yeah, for two. Yeah, you just haven't been able to run the ball. You're sort of one-dimensional with no room down there. That would have been the problem with going for two. Yeah, agreed. With a guy that won the game for you last time. just That'll do it, partner. And the East Dragons come from behind in this one with two defensive scores to post the victory. A crazy finish here as they were able to get uh, the extra point. And that was the difference as Bokta wasn't able to hit the PAT, which has been their strength. They won the last regular season game on what a 32 yard field goal by their kicking game. When you look at the scoring drives here, as Joe puts his stuff together and gets our uh, signature player of the game, uh, things kind of started. Uh, let's see, Bukhtel went up top in the first quarter, getting a 36-yard run by Lino to go up 7-0 in that first quarter. And then uh, they were able to, to answer off a, uh, a fumble return were the Dragons as they returned at 82 yards in that first quarter as well, making it 7-7. Then in the second quarter, Lino goes to Robinson for a 25-yard uh, reception for their second touchdown to go up 14 to 7 uh, right before halftime. Then in the third quarter, East comes back to answer Floyd for a 45 yard run just by himself to tie it up at 14 14. And then you had just the, the opposite here as uh, they had a, a weird uh, pass, backward, lateral, fumble, whatever it was, but the defense came up big and made up 28 yards in kind of a scramble for this loose ball. And number 32 uh, was able to, to come in and uh, Lamonte Stevenson was able to, to lay on top of it in the back of the end zone to go up 21 to 14 as they make the extra point. Both of their extra points, I'm sorry, all three of their extra points were pretty low, but they went through the uprights. And then a fantastic drive by uh, Bookdale to answer 75 yards and, and Lino uh, is able again to, to hit one for 55 yards and then 25 uh, for the touchdown. And he tie, he gets it to 20 to 21, but the extra point, it, it had good strength on it, looked high enough, but just on the left side of the upright, so it does not go through. And that is the turn of the ball game as, they, as, uh, as East wins this one and redeems themselves by, by getting the second victory and becoming City Series champions 21 to 20 here at InfoCision Stadium, Summa Field. And what a great ball game for, for the Griffins. Lino finishes 15 of 21 for 196 yards, three total touchdowns, two through the air to Zion Robinson, who finishes with nine receptions for 113 yards and two touchdowns for the Dragons. Devonier Floyd, 19 carries all purpose back, 113 yards and a touchdown. And I'm having a hard time picking the signature player of the game, but I'll do it, partner. And I mean, I, you want to go off the off the board here, but I mean, we got to give it to the guy who got the go-ahead score, the touchdown, the pass rush of Trey Kelly, and uh, Trey Kelly and Darius Reese all night, especially in the second half. Really, the difference in the game. Really, really, the key was up front. Um, but with the two defensive scores, you know, it's it's championship game. Two defensive scores. Let's give it to both the defensive players that got scores in this game. So, Kyrie Williams with getting the first score on the board and also yards. and also um, our guy Lamonte Stevenson who got the go ahead fumble recovery just on the edge of the end zone the game of inches truly tonight let the guys share it as they can go celebrate tonight on this wild Thursday night the congratulations to our signature players of the game brought to you by Fleury's Cafe in Cuyahoga Falls on 2202 Front Street great place to get signature pancakes for our signature players of the game. Want to thank all of those that helped make this possible for our producer, Ryan Rittenhouse, our engineer, 
uh, Jim Morgan, our cameraman next to us, Peter George, and from Joe Bukanski and Dave Shook, we want to thank you for watching the uh, Akron City Series Championship right here on APS 15, and we thank you. Good night.